coming in hot, guys. The league just unleashed a ton of new information on us about the draft, quarterbacks, so much to get to. Let's just jump right in, Pastel. What what stood out to you the most? Well, the overarching theme is kind of what they've been vocalizing this whole time is it's football reimagined. Right. Us as a fan base, we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable at this point. Like I think we think, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's great. Right. That's a good way to put it. Nice. Mind, from the systematic uh, standpoint that we think football has to be run a certain way. And the XFL is saying, hey, guys, we're doing things differently in this draft and the training camps and then the XFL season. Get used to it. What do you think, Kenny? I love it, man. And and to be honest, they're embracing the inner fantasy football fan. They're embracing the fantasy football community by having a snake draft. It's 90 seconds between picks. Like, they're, it's going to be super quick. Like, it's not going to drag on. I love it. I love what they're doing. I love the uniqueness they're bringing to the draft. And to be honest, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a surprise if this becomes a super popular format for drafts moving forward. Yeah, I think what really stood out to me was the the five phases that they're going to do for a couple different reasons. One, I think it really is, uh, brings a lot of parity to the league. So, for example, if you just did it like a regular draft, right? First pick may pick a quarterback. Second pick may pick uh, an edge rusher. Uh, but I think being able to do the skill players all at one phase and then the offensive line, then the front seven, then the backfield, and then all in a snake draft, I think there's a lot of strategy into it that we've never seen before. At I've the never NFL seen level. anything like this before. Yeah, it I think it's awesome. Totally out of left field. But I think it's, you know, the more that I kind of digest it and take it in at first, I was kind of like thrown back a little bit like, whoa, what is this? Um, Because I was expecting, you know, just your typical 70 round draft. But man, things can get so like, you know, just so complex and complicated if teams are picking in one position and just kind of draining the swamp, if you will. And then they don't leave anything from, you know, for the other teams. This really like kind of hones in and focuses on, you know, certain positions, which I love because I think from a coverage standpoint as well, uh, fans can get much more into it because they know the pool of players Instead of this, you know, pool of a thousand players, you like dwindle it down and you kind of get more into the weeds and ter- these specific positions. It's kind of like the fantasy football draft, right? You have to have be very strategic. If the number one running back is going to be drafted, obviously number one, am I going to double up on receiver if it's a the snake draft? If I'm like picking number eight and nine. Um, you have to like kind of yeah. like really think ahead on how you're going to pick these positions. Yeah, I think that's a that's a fascinating thing because it. You know, I mean, obviously you go right to fantasy football because that's how fantasy does it with the snake draft. We can relate me personally, to it. Me personally, I hate drafting at the ends because you're forced to make quick decisions. We're in the middle. You like make your pick. You have time to like regroup, kind of like 90 see, seconds, the, see the board come off. Here you have 90 seconds, boom, boom, boom. And if you're like at the ends, you're either picking back to back or there's only a couple picks between where you're picking again. So I feel like you could kind of get rushed into making decisions. So you really have to have your ducks in a row and your boards like solid of the players that you well, scouted. All thousand players. All thousand of them. <laughs> yeah. And we're really, we're really going to see. It's wild, man. We're really going to see when the skill players start to go off the board, like what teams, we're going to get an idea, a little bit of insight on how teams are going to want to be built and set up and what kind of maybe what kind of players they're drafting and how that's going to complement maybe the offense they're going to be running. So if DC's picking number one and they pick, you know, first name that comes to mind, Trent Richardson. And, you know, he's a big bruising kind of back. We know, hmm, okay, DC's probably going to run the ball a little bit. But if they go out there and they pick some kind of burner at wide receiver, we're like, well, they might be opening up the offense a little bit and, and be more focused on that. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how that first tier, start, that phase one skill player start going off the board. Yeah, yeah I agree with you, Kenny. The, the other thing that stood out to me when we talk about a snake level draft, think about when you're drafting on ESPN or Yahoo, right? So you have that board that platform that you're sitting on they're going to be uh announcing these selections on xfl.com so knowing vince mcmahon like the like just throughout the years and everything he's done from a promotion standpoint i wonder if he doesn't have a creative ace up his sleeve and essentially promotes it like a fantasy football draft with an entire platform yeah. Right. So if it's all like uh, video conference, have the video conference room right there and it's a complete draft sheet right in front and just picks it like fantasy football. I think it'd be so yep. sweet. They haven't really cool. come out and said like 
they, they said that they're going to be announced on all their, you know, their various social media platforms. They haven't really gotten into detail on how they're going to announce them. It doesn't sound like they're doing like a live video production uh, of that sort, well, well, um, which it, it, I was kind of disappointed in. It. They're going to announce it on XFL.com. Yeah, but that yeah, could I mean don't... a ton of different ways. Like, how 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 are they going to well, present yeah. that? It's going to be it's going to be a conference call. So I'd imagine it'd be like the old NFL drafts kind of. I mean, obviously with newer technology, but yeah. like the old NFL drafts back in the day, where you know the commissioner would pick up the phone, this is who I'm picking, and he'd go up and announce the pick. Now I'm sure it'll be a little different than that, but it does say the draft will be held via conference call. Do you with think they're the, going to just show the conference call? No, no, there's no way. No, I don't no, think won't. I don't think that's how it will work. No, they'll probably have like a little draft board. Like yeah, they'll have a draft board, like a live, shows like a live tracker, by... right? Yep. Yeah, like a live yeah. tracker, like a like a fantasy football, like thing, a fantasy right? football draft. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting too that they're going to allocate before the draft. They're going to allocate the tier one quarterbacks. That's the I biggest mean, news to me personally. Yeah, but but think about it. Like it's because the parity thing with all this. They want to make sure every team has a good tier one type of quarterback. They mm-hmm. want to make sure the snake part of the draft kind of uh promotes that parody honestly so dc has the first overall pick of the entire draft right well if you look at yeah. the next few phases so it has five phases in the draft phase mm-hmm. one phase two phase three phase four with uh, certain position groups within each one of those phases and there's a different team that's picking first in each phase so yeah maybe dc has the best skill player in the draft but that could mean st louis has the best offensive lineman in the draft and it just kind of keeps talking about the parody to, to your point kenny with the quarterback uh, being allocated for the teams yep. prior to the draft. It's interesting how they worded it. If you, I, I've been having conversations with people on Facebook about this, how they worded it. One quarterback will be assigned to each team. That word right there, True. assigned, is scaring people. That's not a not a great word when you're talking about parity. When you're talking about uh, the balance of competition, um, you know. A sign is a word where it's like, well, because it doesn't really go into like why it doesn't go into a description of of how this person player was assigned. Um, a sign kind of just means like, all right, you're going here, you're going here. Does the player have any say of where they're going? Does the team? We know that they uh, supplied a list of quarterbacks that they were interested in to the league. Um, so like how I think people are just a little concerned on how that process is going because a lot of people just wanted the quarterbacks yeah. to be a part of the draft. Maybe have their own like phase, if you will, but be a part of the draft instead of being assigned. So yeah. that well, I'm, I'm I, just, that's something that's been scaring people kind of on online. But it still brings well, parity. Go ahead, Kenny. Yeah. From what I read, the you know obviously we talked about we talked about this previous, but the manager and the coaches they've they've submitted the list of their preferred quarterbacks uh, to the XFL. Obviously, um, you know. It, it, they've been in, in constant communication, but the league also, if they're the league also says they're resolving any disputes, if multiple teams request the same player. So I, I'm sure there's, however they did resolve that dispute. It, it's got to, every team has, every team has to be on board with that. I don't think there's any holdouts or, or they probably wouldn't already announce that by now. I'm also I interested we're find to find out a lot of news after too. Right, like after the draft, I bet details come out. So, and there's only so much you can put in a press release. I mean, there's a lot of information to cover here. So maybe they didn't think that people would be wondering about that, but I felt the same way as you did, Riley. Like the word "assigned" kind of sounds a little bit it's odd. It's just to a me, little. But it's a little odd. It's a little odd. Me. That's all. And it's not just me. It's it's been a big thing on Facebook. Yeah. A lot of people have been talking about that in our comment sections. Um, we we promoted a graphic earlier kind of you know giving a rundown of details from from the press release and that's one thing that people really are kind of harping on is like Mm -hmm. oh i don't know if i like that whole assigned thing like how how are they assigning how is this all working like but that's that's not that's not new though right like we've always known they were going to allocate eight quarterbacks like that's tier one quarter that's always been the i I think it's just more how they're phrasing it than anything honestly Riley, I feel like you just and I and I think it's the biggest news is that this is all happening before the draft. Like we had had conversations, like are they going to wait for NFL or like for guys to get cut from practice mm-hmm. squads later? Yeah. Like how late are they going to wait? Apparently, they're not waiting long at all. Like it's happening well, within the next week. So now people are like, "Wow, wh- wh- where yeah. are these names? Are, do they have eight guys? You know, off to the side here that they're ready to release? Boom, 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 which would be huge, huge yeah. news." Um, over mm-hmm. the next few days, or is it guys that are already in the draft pool, like a Connor Cook, um, that they've promoted on social media heavily over the past mm-hmm. couple of days? 
Is it going to be a guy like him and they're just going to take him out of the pool and be like, Connor Cook has signed with this team or he's been allocated or assigned to this team. So it's just kind of, I think it's just creating a lot of question marks for people. That's all. I, I personally think it's just, I think it's micromanaging one, yes, on the XFL level. Whether you believe in that or not, that's up to you. But I do think it's going to help cause a better parity within the league because it makes, it, there's a panel probably at the XFL that's not very emotionally attached to these players or this team where a, co- a coach like Bob Stoops might be emotionally attached to a player like Landry Jones. So hmm. is it best for the XFL that he gets them? Maybe. But I'm sure uh, Bob Stoops is saying, like, absolutely. But the XFL is stepping in and saying, like, no, maybe he needs to go over here for the better of the whole football league. Well, and, and I'm sure I'm sure they submitted – everybody submitted their list of preferred quarterbacks, and then I'm sure they were ranked. So what the XFL does right. – and I guarantee you this way to the dispute, they probably aggregated everybody's rankings and said, okay, this guy was, was, was ranked number one on only one sheet, and that was by – you know, say it was it was Coach Gilbride, and that was by Coach Gilbride. So he's obviously going to go there. And then this guy, these both these guys had him ranked second. You know, who else did they? Ha- who's the next closest guy? So yeah. I'm sure they aggregated the rankings, and they're having some sort of algorithm that they use. Do you think it would them. benefit the league if maybe after this whole process is concluded, that they they come out and kind of say how this yeah. process went in terms of allocating these quarterbacks? So it's not just yeah. like, well, Bob Stoops wanted Landry Jones. Landry Jones signed, and we just said, all right, Bob Stoops, here you go. Even if other teams had him maybe higher on their list, per se, do you think it would benefit the league if maybe they were a little more transparent uh, with how these quarterbacks were signed and allocated? Or is it none of our I business? Think, I think for the diehards <laughs> like like us and some of the other guys that we interact with on social media, I think that matters for the casual fan. I don't think it's going to matter that much, to be honest with you. I think it's just kind of – Kind oh, yeah, of, I agree uh, with that. Yeah. Through the wind. I mean, that this stuff that we want to know, right? We're really breaking down the XFL and the ins and outs of it. But the casual fan, probably not. It's honestly us well, look, and people that we're, that we're interacting with because those are diehard XFL fans. If you're following yeah, yeah. the XFL right now, you're a diehard. You're XFL a diehard, fan. yeah. So That's I think true. it's you know it's just more of this, this, this pool of, of fans that are really into the league that kind of want to know. You know, we're all on this journey together of how how this league is coming together. It's just so crazy, you know, like seeing these pieces fall into place. Because with the AAF, like I didn't even know about the AAF, Gless, till we were drinking a beer at Devil's Backbone Brewery and the game was on. You're like, oh, look, that new league's on. I had not heard nothing about it. This league I heard about from the very beginning, and we've kind of been following all of the steps. So I think it's just cool for people, and it's just getting a lot more publicity. So it's just cool for people to kind of be along that you know, that ride together with the league. And what's really cool too is, is this isn't the only draft. So at, in, at the end of November, um, it, rumor, if rumors are to be believed, they're going to have a supplemental draft that is going to consist of players that were released from the NFL. Which could they have bigger their, names. Right. Honestly. Which, and they, or, or players who have finished their college career or in Canadian Football League guys who are done with their season. So I mean, who knows? This There could be even bigger names out there at the end of November. So it's pretty cool. We'll at least get a couple drafts. I think that's pretty neat. Hey, Kenny, what did you say about the uh, about Oliver Luck in our Oliver Luck segment? Uh, was that he's a disruptor, right? Yeah, and right now he's, sh- he's shaking up the football <laughs> atmosphere as far as like how things are run. And uh, kind of yeah. like I said earlier, like be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think this is maybe an Oliver Luck factor yeah. with all of this is he's a disruptor and he's shaking things up. It's football reimagined, and I love it. Yeah, yep. that's right. Hey, I mean, one yeah, thing that stuck, way to stuck out to me, yeah, it is. Uh, one of the things that stuck out to me when I was reading what the XFL released, I don't know what you guys thought about this this number that he put out, but the statements: a thousand professional football players, all all who accepted the invitation and passed a background check, are all eligible. That number one thousand actually stood out to me. I don't know why that jumped off the page, but I mean there That's are a, a lot thousand, of players, man, a lot Holy of players crap. to scout, right? And to have a big list that you know you're going to choose from. Now it's going to be seven. You know, seven hundred plus players pick, but a thousand. I don't know. Yeah. That that number just stood out to me. I, I still don't know how to react to that. Other than, I mean, they've done their homework, right? I mean, all these camps, the spring games, all of that kind of stuff. It's a brand new league, so it's going to have a lot of names. You know, that we're so used yeah. to see, seeing the NFL draft have like two hundred fifty six picks, uh, some around there, give or take. Um, that a thousand so jarring. It's, uh, it's like, what are we talking about the MLB draft now. 
Yeah, well, honestly, the way I see it is a lot of people were thinking, like, where are we going to get the athletes from? Is it going to be from the CFL? Is it going to be the practice squad players of the NFL? Is it going to be college athletes? The thousand uh, number, the number thousand, kind of tells me, like, hey, they're getting a little bit of everything because that is a lot of players. And there's mm-hmm. there's players from college now that they are coming into the XFL, and that might start a whole new thing down the road on players leaving the co- uh, college to the NFL, CFL players. Maybe they get paid yeah. more than the XFL. So, I mean, I think it's kind of like saying, like, hey, we have options, guys. They're we slowly leaking out. Yeah, players. they're slowly leaking out, like, uh, the draft pool of players. We're about halfway through right now. And I think it's such a great mixture. I mean, you got you want guys that you've seen in the NFL that kind of were, were in the league for a while. Now they're kind of on the, the twilight years, if you will, of their career. But yeah, I also maybe. love that you have guys from, like, D2 schools. You have guys from the CFL, guys you saw in the AAF. I think yep. the blend of players – it's really is something that excites me. Yeah. It's a very eclectic group. It's good to see. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just from, from now until February, I think the news is just going to pile in. Um, so it's, it's an exciting time to be following the XFL and here at XFL Chalk Talk, we are going to be there the entire way. So follow us on social media at XFL Chalk Talk. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can catch the podcast on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. So make sure you check us out, interact with us, and we will see you next time. What's up, football fans? This is Riley from XFL Chalk Talk. Subscribe below and hit that notification bell so you can receive the latest episodes and bonus content from the show. And interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at XFL Chalk Talk.